I was about 16 or 17 when I was first introduced to computers. I am 73. I'm going to be eight next next month, um, August 13th, right after my mom's. I got started late ninth grade. 64. <laughs> and a half. <laughs> Computer Town is a number of things. Mostly it's a spirit. There's a Computer Town site anywhere that people have set one up. They're in libraries, in public schools, in community centers, in recreation centers. It's grassroots in that it's community-based. I think there are about 40 Computer Town sites in the United States and about 40 in Great Britain and then in a few other countries in Europe. It's providing access to equipment and know-how for anyone. Our youngest classes are for seven-year-olds to nine-year-olds, and then we teach up to 12-year-old. Anybody who's over 12 is an adult. Um, I have 80-year-olds in my class, middle-aged, young, just about the whole spectrum. Anybody who's capable of sitting up at a computer can take one of our classes. Okay, now the type of person who generally takes our classes is not scientific. The most common in the adult classes will be housewives, then businessmen who want to know about computer systems, they're thinking about getting them for their offices, then elderly retired people who just want to keep up with what's going on, and then a few younger students in the high school age who want to go beyond what they're learning in high school. Generally, we keep everything on a non-mathematical level, usually dealing with words rather than numbers, and I think people find it not too difficult and a lot of fun. I mean, we are oriented to going at their pace. I took the course initially because I work with children in the school system who have learning disabilities. And I thought that uh, getting them involved was something uh, as challenging and interesting as a computer might help uh, expedite their learning. I work at a bookstore that has just gone on the computer. And we've had lots of problems with it. And I think that the people that use it don't thoroughly understand what they're doing. And so I thought it would be a lot better if I got some instruction. And it has helped already. I think that it, we will get to the point where everybody will know how to use a computer just like they know how to jump on and ride a bicycle. It'll become a part of daily life. Well, I think it's a lot easier for the kids than it is for the older people. They pick it up so much faster than we do, and I think that's interesting. The adults are intimidated by this machine at the first class. They want to know what happens before they hit that enter or return button. They don't quite understand how it's all working at first, and they want to know. The young children usually are students themselves. They won't wait for you to tell them to turn the machine on. They will immediately begin exploring it and hitting the keys and the buttons. They won't ask what happens before they try it. They'll just do it. They're quite fearless. I'm just learning how to program. Um, I, they have these little, um, like, microchips in them. It's really neat to see the seniors working with the computers. In a sense, the seniors are more like the kids than they are like their grown-up children. The seniors are old enough to forget about what it feels like to be a fool. They're willing to be fools, and they get in there and, and they try things. As far as I know, we are the only place in the United States, which probably means the world, where there's a class of computer teaching or computer understanding for senior citizens. We started this class with the idea of really not so much teaching senior citizens to learn how to be computer programmers as continue to think, continued learning. I firmly believe that the closest thing we'll ever get to the fountain of youth is keeping your mind alive, continued learning. I think the main things is the enthusiasm that I see from the students from learning computers, realizing it is something they can learn and something they can conquer and it's really not a mysterious device. It can become a very useful friend uh, that will do much to make their life easier and more pleasant. I started when Matt came here and uh, sat down and, and started poking around and found out that it was a lot of fun. So I got involved and learned a little bit, not very much, but just kept plugging along. And now I know enough to teach other people who don't know anything. <laughs> Once you've pressed the key and found out the machine doesn't bite, that's the first step. It's kind of like opening a book for the first time. 
first time. In a sense, I see Computer Town growing and blossoming because it's very important for people to master the computer and make it a human tool. In another sense, I think that Computer Town's future is doomed because it's a special purpose activity. It's like, what would happen if we had Pencil Town? You don't hear about a Pencil Town or a Pencil Town movement, which is designed to make people pencil literate. Our society's moved past that. And I think that we will move past becoming computer literate because every child will grow up with computers and we won't need that. But right now, it's in a tremendously important growth stage. There's no way not to be working with people and computers and not be a computer town. It's a catchy name for what we hope is a global effort to include everyone in this information technology.